Hi there! Welcome to another episode of our YouTube channel. <laughs> my name is Sarah Glufker and this is my beautiful daughter, Michaela. Michaela, she's 13 and we are <laughs> we're having so much fun already. Yeah, we yes. Are. Um, we're going to do something today with watercolor and do you like watercolor? Oh yeah. I yeah. love watercolor. She loves watercolor. She's been painting for a while. It's been a lot of fun for her. In the meantime, my friend, her name is Volta Volotion Smith of the Instagram account or website Color Snack. You go check her out. She's a friend of mine and she is in Texas and she just created this really awesome book. She just published it and it's called Watercolor Snacks. And what are we gonna do today? We're going to test out some of the tutorials in the book. Yes. And, and get check it out. We're gonna get our watercolors. Well, our watercolors are already out, but we're gonna check out this book and it's a really, really great book. You can buy it on Amazon or probably, I don't know, from the publisher Rappy Nook. Um, I bought this copy on Amazon and I'm guessing you can buy a copy on Volta's website and we'll have the links in the in the notes or whatever. And <laughs> I know this book is so cool though. You should definitely check it out. It would make a great gift for the upcoming holidays. And I hope you love it. We're gonna check out, um, uh, there's different things in this book. So the beginning of the book has an introduction and it talks about all the materials you need for watercolor. Do you think watercolor is pretty easy? Like, yeah, it's very, accessible. You can take your palette and take it anywhere and do anything with it. Mm -hmm. You can experiment. You can follow the tutorials in Bolt's book. You can just run free with it. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. It is cool. And then do you need a lot of stuff to watercolor? Not really. You just need your palette, paintbrush. So much you your palette right, your palette mm -hmm. and then my palette just came with one paintbrush so that's mainly the paintbrush that i use mm. unless i need it for specific things mm. one paintbrush is really all you need because you can just like make it um you can make it pointy so if you need like fine things or you can mm -hmm. make it you can make it go all across the paper mm -hmm. and then you need water obviously mm -hmm. and then just like some thick paper, some thick watercolor paper, or mm -hmm. even mixed media works good too. Mm -hmm. Just nothing too thin or else it will Get disintegrate the paper. And mm -hmm. yeah. But you could buy a pad of paper for how much? This oh. one was $10 for a sketchbook of watercolor paper. But if you have a whole, if you want mixed media, it's less for mm. a bigger sketchbook. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty affordable. So for yeah. probably less than $20, you can get started and watercolor. If you don't know what to buy, Volta, so the beginning of this book is really great because it talks about watercolor and different tools that you can buy, the kind of paper she prefers, brushes, different brands of paints. Uh, we're gonna use some paper towel and a pencil. So it's very, very accessible. Mm -hmm. Like Michaela said, you can go, you can even buy cheap, um, like the Crayola watercolor paints. You guys used to paint with those as a kid, mm -hmm. like the back to school sales. Um, the, those would be a couple dollars, like not very expensive at all. And um, she yeah. goes through techniques and all different kinds of things. And then in the middle of the book, she has uh, different, types of things that you can paint and she teaches you step by step and it's pretty cool and um like and she has it broken down into meals so these are all foods that you can eat so she has breakfast lunch snacks dinner things uh like desserts, desserts and it's just really drinks. cool it's all step by step and then the last chapter is drinks so we recommend this book. We haven't even tried it yet, and we are already so <laughs> impressed by the quality and just the beautiful illustrations mm -hmm. and the design. And all of the information you get in the front is so valuable. And we are gonna, we're gonna get our paper out and we're gonna do a little sketching and we are gonna try something and let you guys watch as we practice and learn from Volta, the expert. Yes. And we're gonna go on to page 60 in case you have this book. And looks like we're gonna make what? Grilled cheese and tomato soup. Mm-hmm. 
And it's a very cold, dreary day in Michigan. So I think this is the perfect thing to paint. Yeah. Which I hope it doesn't make us want to have grilled cheese for dinner because we already have other things planned, but maybe this week. So, all right, that's it for now. And we will get our stuff ready and do a little sketching and then we'll be ready to get working on this painting. Yes. So, yay, let's get going. Boom. Okay, we're back and we have done the drawing portion, which is something that you guys don't need to watch, but see in this part right here they describe how to make the drawing or volta describes it and these are the colors that you're going to need and we've kind of figured out what those would be on our palettes we're going to start with the wet on wet technique so we're going to want to cover the bread area of the grilled cheese in a thin layer of water okay i can't see pretty exciting watching us paint water yeah and then we're using these little cups um, they're actually the Yoplait, um, what are we, O-U-I, like French. It's like that French yogurt. They're the Wee cups, the glass. So the yogurt's a little more expensive, but you get to keep the cup. And we love using it for watercolor. We do. That was actually a tip I got from an artist, Haley Torres, on Instagram. I watched an Instagram live and she was using him for oil painting. Next, drop some of the yellow ochre, which is this yellowish, brownish color. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're gonna drop some into the wet area and help spread it out using your brush, your brush okay. pen. This is a brush pen if you wanna use it. Okay, I'll just stick with my regular brush. I know, I'm kind of particular. Yeah, me too. No way. Whoa. <laughs> Artist kid is particular. Wow, that's so unheard of. You know, right? So, mm. I don't have much of a yellow ochre color, so I'm going to paint this more like brownish color, and then I'm going to go over it with yellow and kind of mix it in so it forms the yellow ochre color. Ooh, okay. Yeah. I mean, there's different kinds of bread, too. What if you like that CD multigrain bread, which you actually do really like? I do, but it doesn't look the best, so I'm going to make some regular bread. You could also make some, like, white bread. I guess this is supposed to be, like, toasted white bread. Yeah, it is. You know when you make a grilled cheese and it gets all, like, crispy? Yeah. I love grilled cheese. Me too. And you make a really good tomato soup. Yeah. It's I make bomb. a really good grilled cheese, too. Yeah, you do. One. What's your favorite kind of cheese? Everybody has a different... Um... Well, it depends on what mood I'm in. Oh. But, like, across the board, if we have pepper jack, I'm going to use it. Oh, I love pepper jack cheese. Just saying. I mean, how do you, you can't go wrong. I wonder if I move my palette, if it's going to be in your way. But it'll look pretty. Yeah. Oh, that looks good. I don't like it. <laughs> I feel like my arm is, someone's arm is going to go in. I'm just going to put it over here where you can't see it. Sorry, guys. Okay. Okay. What's the next step? Okay. So then it says, let's see. While this is drying, use a similar wet on wet technique. Add the cadmium red light, which is like a light red in the tomato soup area. So you got to clean your brush mm -hmm. and then just get the tomato soup area watered down a little bit. Paint water on it first. Minus the leaves. Minus the basil. Yes. Would you put basil in your tomato soup? Oh, for sure. Oh, man. Remember that summer we grew all that basil? That was so great. That was amazing. Last summer, I don't know what I... I just gave up. It was a fail. <laughs> it was. I'm not, I'm not going to okay. sugarcoat it. It was. Also, another tip for you is... If your water starts getting muddy for watercolor, the best thing to do is just change out your water because it can really affect your colors. Mm -hmm. Like if you have like a pinkish color and you're um and you want it to stay that pretty pink and you have black water, it's going to make it all muddy and disgusting. So wow. just keep that in mind. You're good. Thanks. You've been around the block a few times. You've painted. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good tip, though. Yeah. Because nobody has time for that. Nasty water. Okay, now we need the light reddish orange. Cadmium red light. This is really going to make me want some tomato soup. It says, um, 
Just do the tomato soup area. Yes. Oh man, it is like tomato soup colored. Yeah. Yes. We're gonna send pictures of this to Volta. How do you feel about that? And see what she thinks. I feel good about that. The author of the book. Are you intimidated? She's super sweet. She's going to love it. Yeah. I definitely feel weird. Like, usually when I watercolor paint, I use pictures that I take. And, mm. then, and then I use that as inspiration. Like, nature is one of my big inspirations. And so doing someone else's, like, idea is kind of weird for me. But I'm up for the challenge. And, mm -hmm. of course, I had to take my own artistic spin on it. I can't ever leave it just as it is yeah your basil leaves look different yeah I decided to add three in the middle because the num like amounts of three are really like appealing to the eye the mm. eye is drawn to like a group of three of items so mm -hmm. I just thought that it would look good make it your own right yeah like yeah. a true artist you're already coloring outside of the lines I'm so proud of you thank you I'm so proud of you for not following the directions. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fun. fun. Thanks, man. All right, we're going to have to speed this up because we're taking our little time, our time here. But I like taking my time. Now we'll head over to the spoon and paint a thin layer of Payne's gray, diluted with lots of water so it's light. So gray. Do you have gray on your palette? Yep. So make it really light. It didn't even say doing the wet and dry, wet and wet technique, so maybe we don't. I think Volta would include that. Yeah, I think so too. My spoon is tiny. It's like a baby spoon. Yeah. I wanted my spoon nice and big. Your spoon is, this is no soup spoon. Mine is a soup spoon. I don't mess around. I mean, I guess I could have, at that moment, at want... that moment I could have changed it, but now I'm kind of locked in. You're stuck with it. You're stuck with me. Maybe, I guess so. <laughs> You're stuck with me too. Um, Maybe you just really wanted to enjoy your soup and, like, take, like, small bites. I don't know. Yeah, like, it's so good. It's the best soup I've ever had. Yeah, like, my spoon, like, that's a spoon you would use if you're, like, super hungry. <laughs> and you just, wanted, it just, you just wanted to eat, like, everything. So, I love it. Yeah. Okay. Next step is lift, tiny high, lift off tiny highlights on the left side because that's where the light source is. Uh-huh. So, you need a little swabby? Yes, please. So, the light source is like, like if you're, if like the, the, windows if the this sun way. was like right in this corner and it was shining right here, it would make a highlight right on the left side. So, I'm just going to use my little paper towel here. It's making a weird noise. There, that's good. I like it. And then while the spoon is still wet, drop a little bit of the cobalt blue as small accents of color and let them spread out. See how in this picture there's a little bit of cobalt blue on uh -huh. the right? Yeah. Like teeny bits. I'm going to use a smaller brush because I'm extra. Yeah. I don't think I even have cobalt blue. I have like, it's called Prussian blue. Prussian. It's fine. Cool. Cobalt blue has a little bit of purple in it. Oh. Oh, that's way too much blue. I know, I thought the same thing. Whoopsies. Can I just make it a blue spoon? Like, forget the gray and do blue. Yeah, just let it dry. It'll, it might dry a little lighter too, let me see. You can always use, oh, that looks good. I'm just gonna. It's cool, see? you're. That's gonna make that painting though look really nice. Yeah. All right, so next. Good? Yeah, I just got You're reading the next section, or do you want me to just read it? Um, I'll read it. I just need to get this right. Okay, we're good. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to dilute some of the yellow ochre color with a few drops of water and load a lot of the mixture on your brush. And then we're going to paint another layer on the bread slices to make it even, to make it stand on even more. While it's still wet, we're going to add some burnt, burnt sienna with little dots on the bread with the tip of our brush. It'll resemble um, a soft stippling effect because we're working on the wet paint. So let's do that. 
We're painting another layer of yellow ochre mm -hmm. and then doing little dots that are like. So we're toasting it even yes. more? We're toasting the bread. Okay. Do you go around the edges? Um, with the burnt sienna we do, but I think we're going to wait until the bread dries. So I just fill it in? With, no, we do yellow ochre first. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's bad when your child is more mature than you are. <laughs> I don't know about that. So when do you like to watercolor paint? What, what, when, like? Any time, really. Okay. Just, like, when I have the time. And I like to, um, I like to use photos as inspiration. So that really helps to get the, my mind moving. And sometimes when I have a lot of inspiration, I'll just go and, draw a lot of different things in my sketchbook and then on another day when I don't have as much ideas I'll just go back through and paint some of my drawings that I haven't finished mm -hmm. so yeah okay okay next 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 we're gonna do dots of burnt sienna so the brown color yeah so you do dots of it while it's wet Yes, while well, it's wet. So it like spreads out and Oh, that's fun. Does it thing. This is the part that makes me nervous. Like I feel like I'm gonna mess it up. Nah. It'll be fine. Nah. I mean watercolor is tricky, but it's it can be it's you just know just need to let loose. Like, loosen up, mom. I'm just like doing a bunch of dots and it's like a bunch fun. of happy accidents, right? Yeah. I make the happiest of accidents when I'm watercolor painting. Me too. You know, sometimes the water, the paint does whatever it wants, and I'm like, mm -hmm. no, and then it, and then it turns out pretty cool. Yeah, and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you just gotta let it go, right? Like the song. <laughs> I think I said that to Sydney in one of the videos, and she was like, "Don't sing that, mom. It's copyright. <laughs> <laughs> Disney's gonna come after you." Okay, I'm feeling this. Me too. Okay. I'm going to get it nice and toasty. Toast it up. Golden brown. When you get that golden brown color, there's a fine line between that and like too far, right? You yeah. got to get it off the grill. You got to flip it. And then when you check it, it's either done or it's not. Yeah. Oh, this is making me a little hungry for some grilled cheese. All right. I'm always hungry for grilled cheese. I'm not going to lie. A little bit of the paint or on this step the, right here. Yeah, a little bit of the paint like on the edge, like to make it even more of a highlight. That's what I that's what I needed because it was just not working for me. Today's weather screams tomato soup and grilled cheese. I know. A no December. Wonder, no wonder we picked this. I know. What was it about this particular tutorial that you wanted to do tomato soup and grilled cheese? Was it something in the, was it a feature in like, you know, you really wanted to paint the spoon or is it the subject matter or the colors or what, what got you excited about it? The cheese pull. Yes. The cheese pull. Okay. Where are we here? Enough said. Um, the right side, side shove it deeper. To, okay. Proceed to the spoon. Using a diluted Payne's gray, add a few shadows on the spoon on the right side. Blend those lines while maintaining a few highlights on the left. Mm -hmm. Using that same mixture, paint a thin outline of the tomato soup bowl. Oh, fun. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a little dark line around the edge of the, the spoon and then outline the bowl with the gray. With the... Oh, yeah. I see. I see. I see. 
Yeah? Okay, cool. Okay. This, this brush is, it's, um. You're territorial about it. I am, but it's got a wiggle, it's wiggling. There's a wiggle to it. Yeah. Which? My brush likes to shed. And it's sometimes very frustrating because you can paint the same, you can paint like the best thing ever and it'll still shed on you. It's like, oh no, but it's okay. We can, I can get you a new brush. Christmas is coming. You need good brushes. Looks like you and I need a few watercolor brushes. Yeah. I bet I bet the book tells you what Volta likes to use. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. We gotta get Volta's picks. If you buy the exact set of watercolors that Volta mentions in the introduction, then that will make it a lot easier for you to follow her tutorials because she mentioned the exact colors in the set so like me and my mom are just like mixing colors and like guessing which ones look closest but yeah. like if you own her the her preferred watercolor set then it will be lots easier for you how are you feeling my perfectionist brain is kind of yelling at me right now but it's fine it's gonna turn out good that's the part of watercolor especially where it teaches you how to kind of give up on trying to be perfect. Don't you think so? Yeah. Oh, we gotta have the painting dry? I wonder if we should pause the video. Yeah, probably. Okay, let's pause it. We'll start again when it's dry. Okay, Michaela, next step. So we let the painting dry, paintings, and then after they dry, we're gonna take some of the brown, diluted with a bit of water, and so that's light. Using the very tip of your brush and pen, brush pen, apply very little pressure. Add tiny dots all over the bread slices. Also paint some tiny circles. See the circles? Mm -hmm. um, to indicate the bread's texture. Continue doing this in a methodic and swift motion. Consider also giving, going over some of those dots again with your brush pen to soften them a bit. That's like a little bit of water then. Though we're working wet on dry, we don't want the dots to stand out too much because they should blend into the bread slices to show you the texture. Leave the outer areas of the bread untouched so you can see your first layer of yellow ochre. Oh, so only like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Only do it on the inside part? Yeah. Leave a rim? Mm -hmm. After this has dried, you can go back with a clean, wet brush and soften the dots in circles even more. As you notice from the example, they're not perfect dots. They're rather quick marks from the tip of the brush pen. Okay. So we're going to make, we're going to speckle, but we're going to leave a lip area. Mm -hmm. My grilled cheese is very toasty. I'm realizing it now that it dried. <laughs> Maybe you're the one that likes everything like really crispy. Yeah. One thing about watercolor is it dries fairly quickly, so we weren't waiting for a super long time. But also, like, keep in mind that if you're, if you're, like, wanting to paint something that's, like, different colors right next to each other, like, if you had, like, a pink line and a black line right next to each other, after you paint the black line, you should definitely wait for it to dry before you paint the pink line, because watercolor loves to blend. It's, like, its favorite thing to do like blend 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 so unless you want the pink and the brown to blend together you should probably wait until it the first thing dries before you add the second one that mm -hmm. makes sense. I didn't realize how many layers were in this painting yeah it's very textured mm -hmm. that's cool yeah I like that I know I'm learning so much because I norm okay, honestly, I normally only work with like two layers, maybe with watercolor. But this is a this is the third layer we've worked on this. Mm -hmm. I've already learned something, Volta. Yeah. So cool. Do you think okay, so you're 13. How how old? Like this is a very cool book. I think kids would love it. Because there's a, you know, you can learn how to draw or paint donuts and there's pizza and there's all these fun things. And I think kids would really respond well to the different 
things. And I think it teaches you so much different, like so many techniques. Mm -hmm. How old do you think the youngest would be? I know it depends on the kiddo, but. Yes. Um, I feel like, honestly, like as long as they're old enough to read, like mm -hmm. to read the directions and understand like how watercolor works. So I would probably say like. I don't know. Like, Upper elementary, maybe? Yeah, eight, nine. I don't know. Yeah, it depends on your reader. Yes. And their patience level. And yes. their and their artistic ability. Attention level, maybe. Because I think, you know, like this this one in particular is taking a little bit longer because there's more steps. Yes. So you'd have to have somebody who can handle the process part of it. Because mm -hmm. this is a little bit more this is more in depth and process oriented than say you know, this is like not, I don't know. I I mean, I think a beginner person, yeah, I think it has to do with your maturity level and your patience and your reading ability. But it's not, you know. <gasps> that looks so good. Yeah. Okay. For the cheese, we'll use cadmium yellow. So like a light yellow. Cadmium yellow medium. Paint a thin layer of this color over the cheese and save some highlighted areas. See how the highlighted areas are like in between? Yeah. And keep adding a little more yellow until there's a nice contrast between the highlights on some of the cheese and the rest of it. Okay. And I don't really have a good cadmium yellow. Well, I guess I do. I could just lighten this yellow. Yeah. Who doesn't love the cheese part? No one. You have to make sure your cheese is melted or the grilled cheese is ruined. And I think you have to go around the edges, right? Where the cheese is oozing out. Yes. We talked about what my favorite cheese for grilled cheese is, but what about yours? Me? Yes. Ooh. Okay, I know my answer. I, sometimes I just like a classic American cheese, grilled cheese, you know? It makes you feel like a kid again. Yes. And I know it's not real cheese, but sometimes it's just fun to have the fake cheese or the American cheese. Mm -hmm. um, I can testify for that. I'm a little offended it's called American cheese. What are they trying to say about us, Americans? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah, like Italians get like all the good like Parmesan and like. Yeah, American. We're just the plastic cheese. We're just the. Yeah, we're, the, we're just the cheese wrapped in plastic. <sighs> Like, what does that say about us? That's pretty offensive, if you ask me. Like, yeah. I don't know. So, go. back to the cheese preference. Yeah. You know what I love in a grilled cheese is provolone. Ooh. Like a smoked provolone. Oh, I haven't had a good provolone in a very long time. What if you did a smoked provolone cheddar combo? Combinations are Like a little good. pesto on your grilled cheese. Oh, I've done that before. Okay. Yeah. That's like, ooh, or, okay. I love, like, tomato slices, like those heirloom tomatoes. Yes. Heirloom tomato slices on a grilled cheese, not too thick. It's so good. And then maybe throw in a little basil in mm -hmm. the, I know you don't like basil in your grilled cheese, but I do. You need to make it into pesto, in my opinion. If you like. You don't like the leaves. I don't like the leaves. Like, mm -hmm. like if you chop them up, that's fine, but. Just, it's just too strong for me. You need to add, like, some more flavors in there, like, with the nuts and the cheese of the pesto. Mm. Pesto is the best, though. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I can melt myself. Okay, now, ready? Yes. For the um, soup, we'll I use a little bit more of, of the mixture of cadmium red light and cadmium orange. So, the light red and the orange. With the side of your brush pen and applying pressure, make a large circular mark on the soup. I'm wondering if I use a brush pen, like how much different this could turn out. Because the brush pen also gives you water. Mm -hmm. It's very fancy. 
Okay, so where do we put it? Just like on the inside? This, um, make a large circular mark on the soup. Is it right here? I think so. So it looks like a swirl. After the soup has dried, use a little sap. Oh, then we get to do the basil. I'm so excited. Me too. So I'm going to make like, you know, I'm going to do this. I think this is what. Yeah. Yummy. Okay, just a tip for all you grilled cheese lovers out there. If you have like a, a cheese on a block, like Colby Jack or like cheddar or something, you must shred it or or else it will not melt very well. So like, like I've had grilled cheeses before where I just like slice mm. the cheese. That's a no-no because it doesn't melt good unless like you take a lot, a lot of time doing that. But y'all know if you, if you start making grilled cheese, you want to eat it like very soon because grilled cheeses are awesome, so. Man, you know, you know more about making grilled cheese than the average 13 year old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you gotta cook it, so you gotta cook it like at a lower heat and a slower, right? So that the cheese melts. Well, you don't want the pan to be too so hot. But you also want it to get crispy. I feel like we've talked about this before and you and I have different opinions on that. Yeah. I think you need to get like medium low at the beginning and then like once you know the cheese is like on the right track you turn it up i'm blowing out my painting because i want it to dry we could probably skip over to the spoon or maybe the spoon is done i don't know is it well you're supposed I mean, to let the soup dry and then paint the leaves i need to add more shading to my spoon because yeah you can't really tell you can't tell at all actually the I can tell. Uh, it's very subtle. Just blowing on my soup, cooling yeah. it. I'm cooling it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when it's so hot, but it's so good when it's so hot. In art class, if you if you need to get your um if you need to get your paintings to dry quick, you go over to the air conditioning and you hold it over the air vent. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> to try to get it. That's a hack. Yeah. You could hold it over the heat vent in here. I'm gonna outline my sandwich because I don't know if I missed that step. Oh yeah, like with the crust? Yeah, I wanna make the crust. Yeah. I don't know. I, th I think maybe I missed that. Yeah, I think so too. Crust it. I think Volta's looks so delicious. I Mine, know. I feel like, man, I've got a long way to go in the watercolor world of food. <laughs> Leave it to me, though, to, like, pick the most complicated one. I think this one might not be the easiest one in the book. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I love a good challenge. You know that. Yeah, me too. I was like, yes, let's do it. Volta's professional. If she knows, if you if you put a cheese pull in a painting, that just like ups its cool factor by like a lot. I know. Cheese pull is everything. I'm all about the cheese pull. It's a, it's everything. You're my everything. I'm just <laughs> kidding. But <laughs> that was weird. I was trying to have a mother daughter moment with you, and just backfired. Yeah, it turned weird. Got weird. I'm sorry. I'm so <laughs> awkward. Just didn't even say. Mom, you're so awkward. <laughs> Do you think the soup's dry enough to paint? I think so. Um, so you gotta like, no, I don't think it is actually. Because you have to like lean back and like see if like the soup, like if there's like a glare, you know? Like if you can see like the wetness. Let's pause the video and then we'll fan our pieces. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we'll put it over the air vent. Okay. Okay, we're back. We think it's dry enough. Maybe Michaela pointed out that mine looks like the whole grain bread, which it does. I'm always trying to do the healthier route. <laughs> Be healthy. <laughs> Be healthy, guys. I like the whole grain bread. I think it's delicious. It is, it's good. Use a little of the sap green for the basil leaves. While the leaves are still wet, go back with a clean, damp brush and lift off some tiny, tiny highlights. Okay.
I like the complimentary colors here, Volta. Well done. Very smart. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's like a little extra, right? It's a little fancier. Volta, you're so extra. I can already tell. We should have painted the sushi. Yeah. That's pretty fun. That's that's yeah. extra. That's extra. You don't like it. You don't like sushi, though. Or do you? Um, I have mixed feelings about sushi. Mm. It's okay. It's okay. I love it. I don't love it as much as I love grilled cheese, though. While the leaves are still wet, go back with a clean, damp brush and lift off some tiny highlights. Highlight. Okay. Oh, that's so fun. I would not, I would not have normally thought to do that, but now I'm really happy I did. That's, that's a professional tip right there. Thank you, Volta. Thanks, Volta. I learned, again, I learned something new. So much fun. You know, when I started watercolor painting a year ago, I gave up watercolor painting for like 15 years. And then last year I was just getting the nudge to start again. And Volta was so encouraging on my face, on my Instagram page. She would always comment and encourage me. And I was, for a long time, I thought I just couldn't do watercolor anymore. Is that nice? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. That's very nice. She's so encouraging. Okay. Ready? Yes. Now we're going back to the cheese. Ooh. Use some cadmium yellow medium and add medium shade and add another layer over the cheese to make it really stand out. Be mindful of the highlights as they will bring your painting to life. So you don't want to fill it all in with the same shade of yellow. I mean, you want to leave some white, white spots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. focusing what do you think miss dana would think of your painting i think she would say that it was wonderful i bet she would like this book oh yeah be a good one for her classroom mm -hmm. be a great gift for art teachers just saying great inspiration yeah or you know if you have a student that wants to practice watercolor and you're doing something else teaching wise you could say Hey, check this, check this book out. Or, you know, kids could borrow it and take it home. Mm -hmm. This is making me a little hungry. Yeah. You know? Yeah. How's your cheese? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very yummy looking. Yeah. I don't know what kind of cheese it is, but it looks like some good cheese. We only have a couple more steps. Only a couple more. We mm -hmm. can do it. What's the next step? Okay. So then we're going to apply... Are your basil leaves dry? We're going to have to have them dry. Okay. Hit the pause button. We'll I'll let things dry a little bit. Okay. So now the leaves are dry. So you're going to take a thin... You can take a small brush if you want. You can even okay. use that one. And then you're going to put the veins of the leaves on it. This is the fun part. Make it look like a little basil leaf. I don't know about you, but adding in the cutie details at the end is always my favorite I know, part. It's, my favorite. it's like when you're decorating a cake and you frost it and then you get to put all the stuff on top of it. The yeah. sprinkles, that's what it feels like. Yeah. I love it, Michaela. It looks so good. So cute. Okay. Okay, then with a little bit of mixture of the red and orange, add a thin line just below the leaves to showcase the shadow they're casting on the bowl of soup. Ooh, that's such a cool detail. 
Mm-hmm. It's like a shadow. Done? Um, almost. I love the shadows. Me too. It's my favorite part. Okay. Okay, Michaela, what do you think about the paintings? I think they look so cool and unique and I love them. I know. It's like, I don't know if we dare pick them up. Are they dry enough to pick up? I think so. Yeah. Okay. You can just go like this. Yay. And they turn out so cute. Yeah. A little different, but mm -hmm. that's the fun part is when you work with somebody, you get to see how they do things differently. I love the color of your bread and your <laughs> cheese. I think it's like the perfect toasty grilled cheese <laughs> color for the bread. Mine's definitely more of the whole grain variety. <laughs> and your little basil leaves are so cute. I just, this is adorable. Thank definitely. You. So this book, Watercolor Snacks by Volta Volotion Smith, what do you think? Do you recommend it? Definitely. We love it. And I'm definitely going to try out some more of these. And I already learned some new techniques. Me too. And this is a little bit more in depth than <laughs> some of them. Like we could have painted something that was... Just one item, like yeah, the like cherries. Cherry. Yep, <laughs> but we went all in and we had to do the grilled cheese and tomato soup. And so. the spoon, so we really have three in one. And the spoon. <laughs> we did it. We did it. And we'll definitely be back and make more videos. Will you come back on the YouTube channel? Yes. Yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. And one last thing, this video is gonna come out and then the following Monday, I'm going to be interviewing Volta on my podcast, I Like Art. So if you wanna hear all about um, the artist, her work, the process it took to, to write this and to create this book. Um, she gives a lot of really helpful information and she's so inspiring and amazing and you would love it. So that's the podcast. I like art and until next time, good job. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. you are, you're so good at watercolor. <laughs> so we did it. Do you want a high five or not? Let's do it. Okay. Boom. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.